I saw this morning um, a tag passing by, the Booktube uh, Paris tag by Jim's Books Reading and Stuff. And I thought, ooh, that's one for me. I really love Paris and I love France in general and I love the language. So why not uh, jump on the tag and, and do it? So um, it has been a while since I've been to Paris because it's uh, yeah because of the lockdown. So it has been two and a half years right now. So it should be normally I go in just after the summer, and uh, I will be do doing so if we can if there's no other lockdown and. Uh, if if uh, my work lets me go, then I will go for a couple of days in uh, ma maybe October, November. Mostly I go around that time. Um, it's not far from here. I take the train to Brussels. The, the train to Brussels is 25 minutes. And then I take the train, uh, the Thalys, from uh, Brussels to Paris, which is an hour and 20 minutes. So two hours and I'm in right Centreville, the, the center of the village of Paris, so perfect. Can't be easier. Um, yeah. So, what was the last book you read set in Paris? Well, um, I had to think about this one because I don't really uh, uh, pay much attention to the place. If, if it's set in a village, it's not really often a character uh, in itself in the story, but um, the book that immediately came to mind and it's also translated into English is um, Anomaly, Anomaly by Hervé Le Tellier, which is also a French writer. It's a really good book. It's about um, a flight um, that um, sets off in Paris uh, and flies to um, uh, New York and something happens during that flight. So it's uh, it's a book about that flight and, and the strange things that happen. And it's a really good book because you have those all those different characters and they all have their own uh, issues and things they run from and, and um, things they need to sort out and uh, it's really good it's a good book um, Anomaly Anomaly by Hervé Le Tellier. then what words can't be translated into English Ooh, there are so many savoir faire savoir vivre uh, a certain je ne sais quoi um, so savoir faire means um, when uh, you have um, you, when you're really good at a certain métier. A métier is also a, a, a <laughs> it's difficult. I think in Dutch I speak French and then I have to translate it in English. That's a bit. Uh, tricky. A métier is a sort of profession, but it's more like a, a trade, but mm, it's something you can do really well, like uh, uh, somebody who makes beautiful shoes or uh, beautiful, um, uh, like, like somebody who makes beautiful furniture by hand or a craft. And then uh, savoir-faire is um, really knowing how to do it. Uh, savoir vivre is knowing how to live. Uh, that's that's uh, knowing all the best tricks to live and, and um, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> and then a uh, certain je ne sais quoi that you know. Um, <sighs> à l'aise. A l'aise means uh, slow down a bit, uh, uh, take it easy, uh, something like that, but more in the French way. Do you have a favorite book in translation? Oh, it's difficult. How to kill your babies, huh? There's so many beautiful books. I'll, I'll, do I have to choose? 
No, no, I don't have to. Um, so I said, uh, a Ville Atelier, I really liked that book. I gave it four stars. I read it this year or last year. Um, Philippe Claudel is a favorite of mine. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Simone de Beauvoir. Uh, uh, oh, there's so many. Um, Thon Lytel with his Les Bien uh, Veillant, the kindly ones. Uh, I really like that book. It's, it's so messed up. It's really messed up. But it's really good. Um, what else? Uh, you have Wellenbeck. Uh, that's the one that uh, Steve Donoghue hates. Um, He's a bit trashy. Not Steve on a view, but while and back. Mm. I also count our Belgian out, uh, authors like um, Amélie Nothomb, uh, who lives in uh, Paris, but she's Belgian. We have also Veronique Sels, who is my uh, friend. Uh, she also lives in Paris and writes and. Uh, sold two of her books to a movie company, so we'll be hearing more of her. Um, what else do I read? Uh, Tatiana de Rosnay, um, A Sapele Sara, which is beautiful. Oh, there's so many, so many good writers. Uh, Françoise Sagan. Um, Yeah, that's about it. Uh, have you read books in other languages? I do nothing but. So normally I uh, read one book in Dutch and then another book in, in English. Uh, I rarely read in French because it's too much work related. I, I translate a lot from French to Dutch. So I, I can read a book in, uh, in, in French, but I, I rarely do because it's <laughs> too much work related. Um, yeah, I can read in German and I can read Afrikaans, but I can't speak it. So that's about it. Uh, Jules Verne studied at law school in Paris. Do you have a favorite book by Jules Verne? No, never read them. No, sorry. Maybe long, long, long time ago as a child, but I can't. Re I honestly can't remember. <sighs> Maybe twenty thousand miles under the sea or something like that. I've, I remember, but mm, no. Do you have a favorite movie set in Paris? There are so many. Well, actually, one of my favorite authors is Philippe Claudel. And Philippe Claudel is a, an author, but he's also a filmmaker. And my number one most favorite movie ever is Ya longtemps que je t'aime. I love you a long time. Uh, it's with a um, fabulous, fabulous Kristen Scott Thomas. And she plays a, a woman who just returned from prison, who served a, a 15 year sentence in prison. And her sister, much younger sister, is picking her up. And they don't really know each other because her younger sister never visited her uh, in uh, prison. But nevertheless, she agrees to take her sister in. And uh, we follow the development of the relationship between, between the two sisters. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful movie. I think it's set in Paris, but it's not really a part of... Um, it's, it's not really... Um, how would you call it? Um, uh, sometimes a city can also be uh, a character in a movie. Do you have a fav favorite French car? My last French car that I owned was a Renault. 
uh, Renault Clio, I also had a Renault Megane, uh, I also had a Peugeot. Uh, I really love um, the Citroën DS. We call it the, ar the flat iron. And the Duchevaux, uh, which is also great. And uh, uh, my brother had a gold colored uh, um, Renault R5. I will <laughs> try to find a picture. Have you been to Paris? When was the last time you visited Paris? So I normally go at least once a year. Mostly I go to uh, Paris Photo once a year. That's a sort of uh, fair for art fair, but only for photography. And a lot of um, galleries uh, show their uh, photograph uh, photography there. And you can buy uh, 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 pictures there. So you can buy a Helmut Newton there and you can buy uh, uh, any Leibovitz there and it's it's really cool. So I love photography. It's uh, it's uh, something I've done uh, for a very long time and I still really enjoy it, but I don't do it as a profession anymore. Uh, when was the last time I visited Paris? Just before lockdown. Uh, the winter before lockdown, so. Mostly I go in the winter time and um, because it's quieter. I don't need to visit uh, the big, um, I don't need to visit the Eiffel Tower and, and uh, just go to the areas uh, like uh, Le Marais uh, where I feel comfortable and, and know the shops and the... Uh... So, yeah. Um... Do you have a favorite French painter or a painting set in Paris? Maybe Le Déjeuner uh, sur l'herbe, that's really nice. Do you have a favorite French writer? Well, yeah, that's a bit the same as the previous question. There are so many really good uh, French writers like Diop, uh, who wrote uh, At Night All Blood is Black, or um, Jonathan Lytell with uh, The Kindly Ones, which is a very disturbing book, like I said. Um, it's, it's a bit sad that they, he didn't include a, a, a question about French music, because it's also quite important. Um, for me, I, uh, when I was a teenager, I listened a lot to Patricia Cass, France Gall, uh, uh, who else? Uh, of course, everybody would say um, Jacques Brel, but he's, he's Belgian and now uh, very inventive French music mostly comes out of Belgium, like um, Stromae and uh, Angèle. So yeah, that's it. That's my little trip through Paris. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh, a, a, a movie that I really liked. Um, that was set in Paris, but it's very old. I think it's from the 70s. And uh, that's one of the last I saw because it was uh, something that popped up. Uh, um, Le Père Noël est une ordure, which is... Uh, <laughs> it's a hilarious movie. It's very old. It's about um, an, appartement, uh, 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 an apartment building, a block. And uh, there's a couple living there and they have a, f a phone service for people that want to kill themselves. And then they have a Polish uh, neighbor who likes to cook for them, but can't cook at all. Père um, Noël, Father Christmas, Santa Claus, and, but he's such an a-hole. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious, it's hilarious. So yeah, you have all that combined with um, uh, <laughs> a phone call, a call center for people who are uh, planning to kill themselves. So <laughs> it's hilarious. So yeah, that's it. That's my part. Um, I hope you liked it. I would like to tag Steve Donahue because uh, he, he has visited Paris 
without any doubt, I think. Um, who else? Maybe Jen. She likes to read French stuff and translated stuff. So yeah, and um, that's about it. Uh, and you, if you want to join us, uh, join. I did that too, so it wasn't that. I taught myself. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.